Hi guys and welcome to The Aging Games. Today I'm going to talk to you about relationships, marriage, and can one person be everything for you? This video was inspired by an audiobook that I was listening to driving back from the Costa Blanca with my parents. And it was a really interesting book. And the author talked about, you know, how much relationships have changed and how we live has changed so much that humans are used to living together in packs, in communities of like 50 people or even more. And even if you think back to our grandparents, you know, there were a lot of children, there were large families, large extended families living together, neighbors and everyone coming together to help each other. And it was the same with raising families. There was a large support system for everyone in place. And if you look at relationships and families now, we are having fewer children. The families are much smaller. People are living so far apart from each other. You know, for example, in the US, you could have your parents on the East Coast while you're living on the West Coast, and you only see each other once a year for Thanksgiving or Christmas. So a lot of things have changed. And before we didn't have all this travel and moving around, and we were used to living in close proximity to our loved ones, to friends, to family, and just to neighbors in general. And in today's society, this is really, really different. And oftentimes we get married or we get into a relationship and, you know, we kind of leave our friends behind because now we spend 24 hours a day with this one person, except when you're sleeping or even then, but it, for example, when you're working, but normally you feel like your life has to merge completely with this one person. You need to do everything together. You want this person to be your best friend, your confidant, your support system. And we actually don't realize how much pressure this can put on ourselves and also on our significant other, because it's very difficult to be everything for that one person. And the author of this book went on to question whether this is the reason why so many relationships now break up, why the divorce rate is over 50%. So what is happening in relationships and marriages that is so different from before? Obviously we have a lot more choices and a lot more options. You can just swipe left or swipe right. And you know, there's a hundred other people waiting in line. But what I really wanna focus on in this video is what we can do to still have that community feeling and to have our own lives and to have our separate identity and to have our marriage, our relationship as a very significant and important part of our lives without putting all the extra pressure on that one person to become everything, to fulfill every single need that you have in your life. You know, if you, if you like to dance and your partner hates to dance, then, it, then go dance with someone else. Or if you li love hiking, but your partner doesn't, then you can do those things. You can find a group that you can join and you can do it with them. You, it's also, I think it's really important to have your own friends and to have your own circle of friends, not to have all this merged together as well. And I've seen this become a real problem, especially when people end up splitting up and then they have all these mutual friends and all of a sudden, you know, it becomes this battle who is friends with this person or who is that, or you can end up losing your whole circle of friends, which is very difficult because then you're just not just starting over in your relationship, but you also need to start over with making new friends. And that can be very difficult. I mean, a lot of different groups on social media, on Facebook, and I see a lot of women just venting, complaining, bitching about their husbands and their relationship. And this is so common. It really makes me wonder, like, for example, you don't see guys doing this. I'm sure there are groups like this, but I haven't really come across anything like this. And I don't really see men complaining about their wives publicly online. But you know, what this makes me think and realize is that how lonely those women must be to have to go into a group of strangers to share your your concerns, your experiences, your problems with your husband. I can't imagine doing that. So obviously they are missing that support at home because if you have friends in real life and if you have family to support you, then those would be the people that you would turn to. So I can, I can actually sense the loneliness from these people that are online and just constantly venting about what's happening and what's going on at home with the kids, with the family, with the husband or with their partners. First of all, I don't see how this will actually make their situation better because they're getting advice from complete strangers who know absolutely nothing about their situation. Obviously, they're always going to be supporting the person that's complaining without knowing the other side of the story. And I just find that the more you complain about a situation, the kind of it, the worse it gets, because when has that ever improved anything? I mean, anything that you focus on, and if, if that's the bad parts, the bad traits of your partner or your relationship, 
relationship, then that's going to be magnified and that's going to become worse over time. So I think that is not really a support system, going and joining groups and just complaining, complaining, complaining. I can't really see how that's going to make anything better. I also see a lot of people just telling women, total strangers, to get a divorce and to leave him and walk away. Why would you put up with that without really actually knowing the full story? And I'm not talking about like physical abuse or anything like that. Just, you know, women that are feeling neglected. You know, why do we feel so neglected? Why do we feel so alone? And is it really because our husbands are neglecting us or not giving us enough attention? Or is the problem that we just don't have that sense of community? We just don't have enough people around us. Historically speaking, this is how we were for hundreds of thousands of years. Then this must be like a basic need that us humans have. And if we don't meet those needs, then obviously this is going to impact our relationships and our everyday lives. And it's going to make everything a lot more difficult. So how can we recreate this sense of community and a sense of belonging and to have a support system so that we can improve the relationship with our significant others? And I think this is really, really important to do. And if you have specific hobbies, it's really great to join groups or find like-minded people that you can share those hobbies with so that you're not dragging your husband or wife around to do the things that you enjoy doing but the other person doesn't. Of course, there's always you know ways to compromise, like I'll do this with you if you do that with me, and then we can try to find more shared interests. But I don't think the ultimate goal needs to be that you really do everything with your partner and you know getting friends, finding new friends, and also having a close-knit relationship with your family, keeping that relationship strong and relying on them reach out to your neighbors. I mean, a lot of times we live in neighborhoods where we don't actually even meet our neighbors. We don't even know them. And how sad is that? I mean, can you imagine that before or in different cultures? Like we used to live in Malta and, and our neighbors were our best friends and we all got together and we'd wake up in the morning, the fresh bread would be hanging on the door already or fresh tomatoes placed in front of our door. They would come over without even knocking, just walk into the house and make sure everyone's okay and say hi. And it was like a, this real sense of community and I really loved loved how our son grew up there and everyone knew him and I think it was just really important to have this as part of his childhood and it was very sad that we once we moved away it was really difficult to find that in other countries but if you look at culturally you look at countries like Malta or Spain, Italy, like the Mediterranean countries where family is everything, as opposed to like more northern or eastern countries where it's a little bit different. And we've lived in so many different countries, that's why I can say this. And I can tell you honestly that like in places where the family unit is still very strong and um, community is really important, people are actually much happier. They're much happier, they live a lot longer, and there are also less divorces. For example, back to Malta, you know, the people that we've known, that we knew we, we moved away 13 years ago, but all the couples and families that we knew, they're still together. Nobody got divorced. You know, the people that were dating, they all got married. They had many babies, two, three kids, or even more. And it's so wonderful to see that. And you see that when, you know, there's a family event, everyone comes together, or if something bad happens, everyone comes together and supports each other. And really, they were the happiest people that we've ever known. So um, I think it's kind of trying to get back to those basics, which is which is not easy because, you know, we have our busy lives. We live in big cities far away from everyone and people just don't even stop to say hello to someone or to smile on the street. So of course we feel isolated. Of course we feel lonely. And we do take that out on our significant others. If some of these tips kind of resonate with you, then, you know, step back a little bit. And if you feel like you have been putting a lot of pressure on your husband or your partner, then maybe take some of that pressure off and try to find your own identity, your own interests, your own hobbies, your own tribe that you can feel a part of. I think also husbands don't really enjoy all the emotional talk and you know you can't really treat a man like you would a girlfriend because they don't really want to hear all those things. I mean I see with my husband when I start talking about all this stuff like the girly stuff that you would talk to a girlfriend about it just spaces out completely. He's like absolutely not interested. I mean he's polite, he'll listen, he'll pretend to listen but is that what husbands are for Is that or is that what girlfriends are? for. So just something to think about. I've been thinking about this for the past few days. I did a post about this on Instagram as well. And if this is a contributing factor to people splitting up and getting divorced, then maybe there are a few things that we can do to change this situation. And maybe the 
problem isn't inside the relationship. Maybe the problem is the support system around the relationship and around our lives. So if we can change those little things in a little way, in a small way and, and make it better and improve our relationships, then why not give it a try? So guys, if you enjoyed this video and it resonated with you and you have something to share on this topic, then please comment below. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. Please also check out my latest book with over 100 anti-aging tips. You can also find the link below. It's also available on Amazon. Thanks for watching, guys.